Uh, when one is called a national treasure, then one knows one is old. But, <laughs> but thank you, John. <laughs> so let me extend a very warm welcome to our guests as well as to, to members of the Rensselaer community. Now, at Rensselaer Polytechnic Institute, we believe that four ingredients are required to change the world. Inspired people, programs, platforms, and partnerships. Now, the platform that surrounds us, the Curtis R. Prim Experimental Media and Performing Arts Center, or IMPACT, as we call it, is of particular importance for cognitive computing and the future of human-computer interactions. And that is because this is not only one of the most advanced performing arts centers in the world, it is unique in serving as a laboratory for research, research in haptics, acoustics, lighting, data visualization, and immersive technologies of all kinds, so that we can explore the intersection between the physical world as we experience it at human scale and the digital world and find new applications in all fields as well as in the arts. Now, great platforms such as IMPACT potentiate great partnerships, such as that between Rensselaer Polytechnic Institute and the IBM Corporation. And so we are so pleased that IBM chose to hold its cognitive colloquium here. Now, in fact, the partnership between us dates back decades, in fact, all the way back to the revolutionary IBM System 360. Now, today, under the leadership of Dr. John E. Kelly III, who is IBM's senior vice president of the solutions portfolio and of IBM Research, the company is engaging with Rensselaer in joint investigations of soaring potentials. Now, I should uh, note that as president, that Dr. Kelly is a member of the Rensselaer classes of 1978 and 1980 and is a valued member of our board of trustees. And so, and for me, one of the inspired and inspiring people allowing Rensselaer to change the world. Now, the platforms flowing from our partnership encompass our IBM Blue Gene Q supercomputer the Advanced Multiprocessing Optimized System, or AMOS, named after Rensselaer founder, co-founder Amos Eaton, which is the most powerful supercomputer at an American private university. Now, Amos resides at our Center for Computational Innovation, or the CCI, where we are modeling the exascale computation of the future. Uh, in the CCI, we also are exploring ways to couple systems, systems such as AMOS, with the IBM True North neuromorphic chip technology for new hybrid forms of computation. Modeled on the architecture of the human brain, and John can tell you a lot more about this than I can, True North is, like our brains, highly energy efficient, extremely resilient, and adept at image and pattern recognition, an important advance at a moment when we are awash in digital images that computers struggle to interpret. Now, we are very proud as well that Rensselaer alumni were key to the development of the pioneering IBM cognitive computing system, Watson, and delighted that we were the first, and so far the only, university in this country to receive a physical instantiation of a Watson system for exploration. And you'll hear why that's important shortly. We also have partnered with IBM on the Jefferson Project, which is investigating the stressors on the water quality of Lake George here in New York, just north of here, in an unprecedentedly data-intensive way using advanced sensors some invented specifically for this purpose, and advanced data analytics, integration, and visualization tools that are yielding, yielding a highly detailed yet panoramic picture of the lake and the life within it, establishing an entirely new model for environmental stewardship 
that will be applicable to freshwater resources around the globe. Now, since this is Rensselaer, we take on the hard problems, such as the question of how we can marry the Internet of Things with predictive analytics to save and threatened ecosystems. Now, here are just a few more examples of the hard problems we intend to help resolve. The fact that the genomics revolution has not yet fully transformed and personalized the practice of medicine, and that doctors still struggle with therapeutics that fail in a high percentage of patients or are toxic to an unpredictable subset of patients. The fact that education does not yet accommodate different learning styles as a matter of course, and does not sufficiently recognize that we learn with our hands, our ears, our eyes, our palates, and our noses, as well as with our reason. The fact also that architects and designers do not yet have the really elegant tools that allow them to work collaboratively on different aspects of the same problem and same project together at human scale. The fact that businesses, and I see this all the time, considering risking their enterprises on new investments, mergers, or acquisitions, find it difficult, difficult to account for extreme possibilities in their valuations. Yet we live in a world where extreme possibilities exist, ones that can be triggered by climate change, by the rise of non-state actors, by the likelihood of financial contagion in a global economy, and by the many uh, risks that arise simply from our sheer connectedness, and the fact that as we unfortunately just saw in Paris, and it plays out in different places around the world, the most sophisticated nations on Earth cannot yet predict and prevent strikes by terrorists on innocent civilians. So to give experts in many different domains the tools to meet such challenges, IBM and Rensselaer now are embarking upon another world-changing program the Cognitive and Immersive Systems Laboratory, or CISL, at IMPACT. CISL at IMPACT is bringing together two strains of advancing technologies. First, cognitive computing that builds off of advances in high-performance computing, neuromorphic computing, and artificial intelligence. And second, new research in sensor and actuator-rich immersive and interactive systems. CISL at IMPACT initially will focus on situations rooms that bridge human perception with intelligent systems in an immersive interactive setting, enabling environments such as a cognitive design studio, a cognitive boardroom, a cognitive medical diagnosis room or a cognitive classroom. The goal is to vastly improve group decision making in many different fields. Now, when I said that we like to solve the hard problems here at Rensselaer, that includes great technological challenges as well as great, in fact, global challenges. Now, to create situations rooms, we are convening experts from IBM and from all five of our schools, talented people in an extraordinary array of disciplines. And we are so pleased that Dr. Hui Su, whom you will meet shortly, who has served as director of the IBM Research Laboratory in Cambridge, Massachusetts, is now on board as the first director of CISL at IMPACT. The technological challenges of situations rooms include the fact that we are building on two kinds of intelligence and building that into them. First, 
we recognize the great power of cognitive computing to amass enormous amounts of pertinent information, including structured and unstructured natural language data, whether that be in the form of scientific papers, analysts' reports, or tweets, and to find answers to hard questions for us within them. But here is what makes CISL at Impact particularly ambitious. We are not using and do not intend to use cognitive computing at the scale of a single cognitive agent, such as you might find in your smartphone, assisting a single human. Instead, we will build upon technologies designed originally for individuals to enhance group cognition and group decision making. At Rensselaer, we see that the great challenges of our day, in fact, are too complex and interconnected to be resolved solely by individual endeavor. So we must work together. Now, this makes IBM, which focuses on business-wide solutions, and which understands deeply the value of collaborations, as well as the realities of the ways that major decisions are made, the ideal partner in such an endeavor. So for our situations rooms, we will likely need and are anticipating the need for a hierarchy of cognitive agents that can assist each individual as well as an overarching agent to facilitate the group. The group meaning the humans and the other cognitive agents. All allowing the immersive environment itself to act as an additional participant in a meeting with human level intelligence or as close to it as we can get. Obviously, to contribute to group interactions, these agents must be truly sophisticated with natural language processing abilities that capture the ambiguity, unclear references, interruptions, and exclamations with which we all are familiar from our own experience of meetings and to convert them into understanding, even into understanding the underlying intent of what is being said. These agents must not just answer questions, but anticipate the need for information so that the room, the interactive space, can visualize that information in the most expressive ways. The second kind of intelligence our situations rooms require, belongs to the rooms themselves. In them, we are enhancing cognition at the human scale, not at the level of small devices, but within multimodal spaces that take in visual cues, verbal cues, and movement, and translate this information into symbolic inputs for the cognitive agents, whose results it will then communicate back in the most enlightening way, using visual, auditory, even haptic modes of communication, allowing users to perceive and comprehend through multi multiple sensory pathways. Now, this requires computer vision capabilities that allow participants to be recognized by their faces. And that's interesting. People always say to me, well, haven't I seen you before? Uh, I say, well, I don't think so. But. but then to be followed around the room and auditory capabilities that can capture what each individual is saying. Gesture recognition also is important to enable human computer interfaces that feel natural so the room is not distracting but helpful. Finally, the room should be able to use these sensory cues to follow the flow of a meeting, even to pick up mood, biases, 
degrees of power and interest, and when and whether a decision has been reached or a consensus has been reached. Needless to say, this vision is quite ambitious, yet the remarkable research breakthroughs already occurring at Rensselaer and at IBM make such an ambition achievable. Now, among these breakthroughs are a new era of computing, machines that can absorb unstructured data and categorize, infer, and predict with it. Machines that can learn from their interactions with people. Machines that increasingly can interpret information arriving in different modes, just as we use our different senses to draw information from our environment. Now, I'm referring not just to cognitive computing, but to cognitive computing enabled by a computational ecosystem that includes high-performance computing and neuromorphic computing. Also key are advances in data science emanating from our tetherless world constellation and the Rensselaer Institute for Data Exploration and Applications, or the Rensselaer idea, the big idea, that allow machines to use and correlate data of many different kinds in many different forms from many different sources in many different languages to offer us insights. Professor Jim Hendler, director of the Rensselaer idea and tetherless world constellation professor, also has made great strides in allowing cognitive technologies to access not just the body of information programmed into the machine, into the computational system, but also the entire open world of information on the web so that they can assist us, these computational systems, as events change and new avenues worthy of consideration open up. Now, this open information includes the data and insights to be gleaned from the formation and movement of social networks, which Professor Bolick Szymanski and Professor Sibel Adali of our Network Science and Technology Center have used to model issues such as commitment and trust, which are key in joint decision making and in understanding how humans and computers can work together more productively. We also believe that situations rooms able not just to analyze and answer questions, but also able to infer and to interact with great subtlety are an achievable goal given recent advances in artificial intelligence. You're going to hear about some of this as we go today. For example, Professor Selmer Bringsjord, head of our cognitive science department and director of the Rensselaer Artificial Intelligence and Reasoning Laboratory, has developed robots able to sense and to reason, and because of it, to pass a new and difficult test of machine self-awareness. In this test, three robots were programmed to understand that two of them had been given a special dumbing pill that would not allow them to speak, a dumbing pill that would not allow them to speak, and the third a placebo. But they were not told which got which. Their task was to say which type of pill they had been given. Initially, the robot on the right responds, I don't know. But then hearing itself, it realizes it has not gotten the pill that renders it dumb and answers correctly. Please watch. I don't know. Sorry, I know now. I was able to prove that I was not given a dumbing pill. Now, obviously, 
our system didn't work the way the robots work. <laughs> the point is, the robot hears itself and recognizes it was not given the dumbed-down pill. But we have to work on our dumb systems. But this is actually remarkable. It's been written up in quite a few places. Now, the breakthroughs that bring us here today also include remarkable advances in immersive technologies of all kinds, including those that are emerging from the IBM Cognitive Environments Laboratory, as well as from Rensselaer Research. For instance, at our Smart Lighting Engineering Research Center, Professor Rich Radke of our Department of Electrical Computer and Systems Engineering, and an expert in computer vision and visual analytics, already has created a smart conference room that uses infrared distance sensors to react to group activity, adjusting the lighting in the room for presentations, for seated discussions, even for emergencies if someone falls. He has done something similar with a large camera array that he has set up here in Impact to follow and interpret the movement and flow of people and belongings as in an airport screening process. Also contributing to the development of situations rooms will be advances in panoramic screen technology and position and acoustical tracking developed and pioneered here at IMPACT by IMPACT Director Johannes Gerber and at our Collaborative Research Augmented Immersive Virtual Environment Laboratory. We like the long names or the Crave Lab by Professor Jonas Brosh of our School of Architecture, an expert in architectural acoustics. The Crave Lab already is being used by architecture students for human-scale group design. To support discussions among a small group of people, senior research engineer Eric Amaris of Impact has developed something called Campfire, a virtual fire pit, as it were, which serves as an interactive interface for visual information, representation, and collaborative analysis. Now, inspiring us on this journey to immersive, interactive, multimodal group experiences is a Rensselaer pedagogical innovation that we call simply the Mandarin Project, a class that teaches the Mandarin Chinese language and culture in an accelerated fashion. And that's because we intend for our students to be global citizens. It uses a multiplayer game with a semester-long narrative. The students are part of the game, of the narrative. It uses a mixed reality immersive experience and interaction with artificially intelligent virtual characters. Now, currently, these interactions require a laborious handcrafting of the topics and the language model. Now, Rensselaer idea director Jim Hendler an expert in cognitive computing and the semantic web, is joining forces with Dr. Hang Ji, the Edward P. Hamilton Development Chair, Associate Professor in our Department of Computer Science, a theoretical linguist as well as a computer scientist and expert in computer extraction, and Professor May C. of our Cognitive Science Department, an expert in interactive storytelling to automate the creation of cognitive agents, able to use living information extraction, which will pull information from the web about entities and events, use a new approach based on the IBM Watson technology to analyze the relationships among them, decide what is interesting about them, and use storytelling techniques to present the information to the user. This is how we innovate pedagogically. All of these fascinating breakthroughs in research will be made more powerful in combination at CISL, at IMPACT. We will pull together diverse domains in order to inspire something truly new. This is the very essence of our vision for Rensselaer Polytechnic Institute as we approach our third century as the new Polytechnic a great crossroads for innovation and discovery, which convenes talented people across all disciplinary and geographic borders, equips them 
with the most advanced technologies and encourages them to collaborate to change the world. CISL at Impact also will bring together humans and machines, as I've described, in much more subtle and sophisticated ways, so that machines, with their ability to absorb enormous amounts of data and to employ that data for calculation, analysis, representation, prediction, and hypothesis generation, can enhance these gifts that belong uniquely to human decision makers. Those gifts being creativity, courage, insight, and a desire to make the world a better place. Now these tools whose development we launched today truly are momentous. And so I thank you for your attention.